On this channel, I've reviewed cars designed and built in every decade from the 80s through to the present day. I do believe that all decades have their charm when it comes to cars, but a particular one has stood out to me as what I can only describe as an automotive sweet spot. The 2000s, quite frankly, was an awesome decade for car design and manufacturing. With safety, reliability, build quality, rust proofing all vastly improved over the previous decades, cars were largely yet to be bestowed with the complex computers, sensors and emission reduction tech that we are used to today. In addition to all this, it's these cars that can now be had for very little money. It's this generation that cheap runabouts and bargain future classics alike are just waiting to be snapped up. It's also a period that I keep coming back to in my own car choices. Currently, I have a 2006 Mercedes CLK. The noughties were a time of simple but solid looking car designs. Cars were quite elegant, with usually just one crease down the side known as the bone line, made popular in 1999 by the Mark I Ford Focus. Cars had started to look sturdy, like they were built to last. The infotainment technology was still quite basic, but hear me out, this is a good thing. Though there were some early sat-nav screens that have now dated quite badly, most Naughty's cars had small screens made of simple pixels, which means less to go wrong. And they are less distracting. Massive touchscreens with hundreds of functions can really take your eye away from the road. And who wants to pay for this to be fixed when it goes on the blink in a few years' time? For me, the Naughty's decade for cars actually began in 1997, with cars like the Mark IV Volkswagen Golf followed in 1998 by the Opel Vauxhall Astra G and the lesser-known Ford Cougar. The year 2000 itself kicked off with the straight-edge designs of the Mark III Ford Mondeo, second-generation Audi A4 and ninth-generation Toyota Corolla. In the supercar world, Ferrari were still building pretty cars rather than the technologically impressive but somewhat functional looking cars of today. Also, car badges were not yet the size of dinner plates, and excluding Audi at least, grills were still the size they needed to be for their actual purpose, getting air into the engine. Some of the greatest categories of car were still in their heyday, the executive saloon, the coupe, the hot hatch and even the MPV. SUVs and crossovers like the Toyota RAV4 existed, but they weren't the all-encompassing category that they are today. The Nissan Duke was but a pipe dream. Internal combustion was at its peak. Hybrids were still in their infancy and all manner of ICE engines were available. Volkswagen had their crazy W8 and W12 engines, Volvo, Ford and Audi with their straight fives, BMW with their sonorous, naturally aspirated straight sixes. Even the supercharger was making a comeback and could be had on cars like the Mini Cooper and a variety of compressor-badged Mercedes-Benz. The V8 was very much still alive and well in cars such as the Lexus LS430, Jaguar S-Type, Audi S8 or even the Volvo S80. It seemed like Mercedes would put a V8 in pretty much anything. The now ubiquitous turbocharger was given only to exciting performance cars like the Subaru Impreza WRX or Volkswagen Golf GTI. Turbos have since been added to almost every car in the name of emissions and economy, so whilst a noble goal, they add complexity to your average runabout, and reliability in the modern age has suffered. It was also a time before Auto Stop Start, a system that apparently helps save fuel by cutting the engine out while idling, but in reality, it's just irritating. The diesel particulate filter, or DPF, is the bane of many a diesel car owner now, but it wasn't introduced until 2009. Get behind the wheel of a car built in the noughties and I'll guarantee a modern driving experience. You might not have the huge touchscreen, but the way the car feels on the move, it'll be refined, comfortable and handle in a safe manner. And if it's been looked after, it probably won't leave you stranded by the side of the road. The noughties also saw the introduction of the Bugatti Veyron, an incredible masterpiece of automotive design and engineering with its W16 engine, quad turbochargers and top speed of 253 miles per hour. And the Porsche Carrera GT, a visceral beast of a machine known to be the last proper analogue supercar. At the other end of the scale, this generation of car is now at the very bottom of the market, the point at which most of them are at the lowest prices they will ever go. An old Saab for £1,000 or a Mark I Focus for 500 Pick the right car and it's only up from here. What about a V12 Mercedes CL600 or BMW 7 Series for just a few grand? But make sure you keep a few quid aside for maintenance, aka mega bills. It was the last decade you could get your hands on the quirky Swedish brand Saab. 
The automotive world is still missing the pioneering thinking of the quirky company that likened their road cars to jet fighters. It's a loss that I still mourn to this day. Do you have a noughties car? Do you agree? Or perhaps a different decade gets your vote? Let me know in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe and all that good stuff, and many of these cars that are featured in the video have been reviewed, so be sure to check those videos out too.